What's up guys, I'm Drew with Gigahertz Media. I just wanna do a quick video just going over my takeaways from recently passing the exam part of 107 so that you can fly drones commercially. So first off, I had no previous technical aeronautical knowledge, um, but I will say that I have been flying multi-copters for the past couple years. Um, I recently took the exam and I passed with an 80%, but full disclaimer is I'm not an instructor. This is just a quick video kind of going over my takeaways from um, taking the exam in my immediate area, which is Colorado Springs. But if you're not in the immediate area, you could probably take away a lot of these ideas as well. So let's talk studying. So all the material can be found on the FAA website. Um, that's the study guide, the part 107 overview, as well as a practice test. Um, and I can't stress it enough that it's important to get to know all the material and all the areas. Um, in my case, I didn't have any previous aeronautical knowledge. So what I went ahead and did was I made detailed notes first and on the concepts I wasn't getting the hang of, I used note cards to quiz myself and get um, stronger in those areas. The two areas that I really had trouble with were sectional charts as well as airspace. So I went and found a couple YouTube videos that helped me immensely in that area. So I'll link them in the description below um, so that hopefully they can help you out as well. I will say that the exam itself, um, there's nothing off limits and it's good to know all the concepts because some of the questions also are built on top of each other. So it doesn't only have one part of a section, it has two parts of the section. And if you don't know either one of those parts, then you're not gonna get the correct answer. So let's talk arrival. So I'm only gonna to touch on this real lightly because I think my experience was a little unique. Um, I took my UAG exam in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I was apparently the first one to do so. Two hard parts about that was that they had never given it out so they weren't really sure about the process as well as it was on an Air Force Base. If you're taking your exam in the Colorado Springs area and you're planning on going to the Air Force Base, I would recommend getting there really early um, and using the south entrance. Um, so in my case what happened was is I had to go into the south entrance. Um, I had to go to the registration office and I had to wait for the proctor of the exam to come out and get me and bring me on to base. Um, as a sponsor because I wasn't allowed to go on base separate. Um, I can tell you that you don't want to go onto the base as a visitor because they won't allow you back into the area where you need to actually take the exam. So really in my case, I had made my appointment to have the exam at 9.30 in the morning. I didn't actually make it onto base until 9.40. I was really stressing about this, but realistically, there's no need to stress. They give you four hours in total and really the exam only takes two hours. Um, the extra two hours there are kind of a buffer, I'm assuming, um, so that you can do paperwork and that you can actually get onto base. So let's talk the test. The test is actually made up of 60 questions. They're all multiple choice. It's all computer based and you have two hours to complete it. It's over all the material and it's in actually no particular order. Um, the things that I found most helpful when coming to the exam was understanding sectional charts because they're so complicated, but they hold a lot of information. Um, the other key concepts that you want to know are tar weather readouts. Um, you're going to want to know about CRM as well as ADM. And then you're really going to have to have a real good understanding of 107 and the rules and regulations that go along with that. But I can't stress it enough that there's really nothing that's off limits when it comes to the exam itself. Um, for me, it took me just under an hour and 30 minutes to complete. When you're finished taking the test, you'll instantly get your results. If you passed, then you'll just have a couple more signatures and they'll give you a printout of the actual report from the test. And then you're finished. And then you finished. Then you finished the whole test. You made it through. So when you pass, time to celebrate, but also time to let all those key concepts kind of sink in. Um, really what you've just taken on was a huge responsibility because now you're becoming a remote pilot in command Which means that all the responsibility is pretty much on your shoulders to have a safe and responsible flight every single time So good job. If you haven't taken it yet. Good luck um, If you like this video, please give me a like if not Too bad for you Anyways, thanks guys for watching 
If you guys have any questions, comments, you know where to leave them. Other than that, we'll catch you in the next one. Later.